Bobco, the barcoding facility for organisms and tissues of policy concern, is jointly run by the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences and the Royal Museum for Central Africa. It is a service and expertise center for identifying biological materials of policy concern and their derived products upon request. This service is available for all stakeholders who deal with such materials and are in need of an accurate identification. Organisms of policy concern include, for example, endangered and protected species, disease organisms and their vectors, invasive alien species, agricultural pests, species of forensic interest, and organisms of the food chain. In this demo video, we will demonstrate how we at Bobco handle requests for species identification. We will do so by following meat samples that were collected by journalists from the public TV station VRT in the framework of a panel documentary about the bushmeat market in Brussels. Hello, my name is Steen Verkruijsen. I'm a journalist for Belgian television and some while ago I made a documentary on bushmeat, on the trade in bushmeat and the fact that bushmeat is smuggled into European cities like uh, Brussels through our airports. In Brussels we were able to film with hidden camera how we could buy bushmeat in some of the little shops in the African neighborhood in Brussels, how easy it is. And with these three pieces of meat we went to Bobco uh, where they analyzed it for us. We filmed the whole process and they explained us how they do it. Whenever Bobco receives biological samples for species identification, we first consult an expert taxonomist to find out if an identification based on morphological characteristics is possible. We therefore rely on a network of in-house and external taxonomic experts, as well as on the extensive specimen collections at both scientific institutes. In the case of the bushmeat samples, we referred Stan for a first inspection of the meat pieces to Dr. Erik Verheyen, our in-house expert on African vertebrates and the bush ja, trade. Deze is zo toch geboekeneerd of, of bewaard vlees, niet veel van te maken. Gedroogd of gerookt, toch zeker. Het lijkt mij gerookt eerlijk gezegd. En uh, ja, om te weten wat het is, zullen we toch wel meer nodig hebben dan een blik op het uitwinnige van dit stukje kerkers. Ja, ja, ja. Because the bushmeat samples involved small pieces of the animals, which were heavily burned and smoked, no distinguishing morphological characteristics were available to make an identification at the species level. Therefore, we performed a DNA-based identification. The first step in the process is the extraction of DNA, for which we use commercially available kits. In the case of the bushmeat samples, we dissected a small piece of tissue from just beneath the skin, while being cautious because these samples could be potential sources of diseases and parasites. The cells in the dissected piece of tissue are broken down using an enzyme so that their DNA is released into the buffer solution. Through centrifugation, the DNA is separated from the cell debris that will sink to the bottom. In the next step, the clean solution containing the DNA is transferred to a spin column with a special filter that will bind the DNA during centrifugation, while the rest of the solution passes through. After several washing steps, the DNA is collected from the filter using an elution buffer, resulting in a solution containing concentrated DNA from our tissue sample. The next step in the identification process is the PCR, or polymerase chain reaction, wherein we make multiple copies of the fragment of DNA in which we are interested. Exactly which fragment of DNA we use to identify our sample depends on the taxonomic group to which our organism belongs and the amount of sequence data that is available in the public reference databases we use for comparison. In the case of the bushmeat samples, where we knew the meat was derived from vertebrates, we selected cytochrome C oxidase subunit 1 and cytochrome B, two mitochondrial DNA fragments for which many vertebrate species are represented in the reference databases. To make multiple copies of our selected fragments, 
We take our extracted DNA and add a polymerase enzyme called TAC. Many of the individual building blocks of DNA called nucleotides and a set of primers which is specific for the fragment we want to amplify. We then heat the mixture so the double-stranded DNA will denaturate and fall apart in two separate strands. Next, we cool the mixture so the primers can bind on both strands at the edges of the fragment of interest. Finally, an increase in temperature will initiate the TAC enzyme to incorporate nucleotides and synthesize a new strand of DNA that is complementary to the template DNA. This cycle is repeated 20 to 40 times, each time doubling the number of copies of our fragment of interest. Once we have millions of copies, our fragment can be sequenced and this sequence can be compared to the reference databases in order to identify our sample. To do so, we use alignment algorithms and the sequences available in GenBank and BOLD as reference databases. If the species from which the sample was derived is represented in either one of the databases, our comparison will return a reference sequence with a very high similarity match. This sequence most likely represents the species identity of our sample. However, GenBank and BOLD are not complete and often reference sequences for species or even entire genera are missing from the online databases. In such cases, specimens can only be identified to a higher taxonomic level. As a rule of thumb, the more species are represented in the reference databases and the more DNA fragments are compared, the higher the chance of reliable species identification. To increase our certainty about the correctness of the identification, we additionally perform clustering analyses and build a neighbor joining tree using downloaded reference sequences from the identified species and its close relatives. This allows us to check if the best matching sequence involves a potential mislabeling and if the selected marker can distinguish among sister species. Such extra analyses to examine the correctness of the reference sequences and the representation of sister taxa are crucial elements for the interpretation of the results from the sequence comparison and will determine the accuracy of the identification. After a few days they gave us the results uh, and they could tell us uh, very exactly what kind of species we had the meat from and where these species live normally. It ging om twee aapjes en om een, om een duiker. En we hebben die aan de hand van het DNA kunnen identificeren. En het gaat om de duiker is een blauwe duiker. En dan de aapjes hebben we de Brazza meerkat en een roodstaart meerkat. The results and conclusions of our analyses are summarized in a full report that provides the species identification, as well as an assessment of the reliability of this identification an overview of the laboratory protocols used in the process and basic information on the identified species, such as its protected status, the life history, its pest status and management, its geographic distribution, and so on, depending on the questions from the user. So I'm very thankful for this cooperation with Bobco because now we were able to document on this problem uh, and the result is that the government has started a sensibilization campaign uh, in Brussels airport to prevent the smuggling of bushmeat into Belgium, into Europe. Thank you. You are very welcome to visit our website in case you like more information on Bobco and its team members, on the different scientific projects we are currently working on and their various outputs, or on our species identification service. Here, you can also find a web form which allows you to request an identification of your samples. If you have any more specific questions concerning Bobco or DNA-based identifications, please do not hesitate to contact us directly.